Hi ladies and gentlemen, uh, today's video is going to be about knife safety. Specifically, I'm talking about X-Acto knives. They're a great tool that we use in the art room um, and are used for a lot of other crafts and hobbies. Um, this is a tool that, you know, there aren't a lot of other tools that can replace it. We, it makes a lot of things that we do much easier. But they can be a little bit on the dangerous side if you don't use them the right way. So what I'm going to do today is talk a little bit about how to use them and how to use them safely. These are X-Acto knife blades, and they come in, you know, packs of usually about five or six. Um, this is a standard, what they call a number 11 blade, so the blade itself is on the angled part. And the reason that it's important that you replace your blades from time to time is actually not only for convenience and cutting, but also safety. A dull blade cuts poorly, and so when it cuts poorly, we tend to put more pressure on it, and when we put more pressure on it, that gives plenty of opportunities for us to hurt ourselves. All right, so here is a brand new blade, um, and it's very sharp. That edge that's really bright right now in the light is the cutting edge, and of course the point itself is really sharp. Here's an older, duller one. You can see even the point is a little bit dull. Um, the cutting edge you can see in the light has lots of nicks and grossness on it. And because these things aren't like stainless steel or anything, it's kind of gummed up with a little bit of rust and a lot of other junk. So here's how you remove the blade. Now, a lot of people think that you use this, um, this knurled area all the time um, uh, to grip and twist it. And it's good to get it started there. But once you do that, that actually is there just so that when you're holding the knife, and cutting with it, you have a nice secure grip. It actually doesn't have anything to do with removing the blade. So I just use that area to get it started because it's rough. But once it's started, I grab the blade and I twist the handle of the knife. And then you can see there's a little rounded area that's called the collet. And the collet holds the blade in. Now, because it's under tension all the time when this collar is up against it, um, that thing kind of tends to stick there. So sometimes you have to pull it down to loosen up on the blade. And once the blade's loose, and this is one of those times where I'm going to have to pull it down a little bit, and now the blade's loose, and there's the old blade. Yuck. Okay? This, um, you should, if you have to replace the blade in the art room, you should give it to me. I have a sharps container, which is um, a container where we put sharp objects so that they can't hurt anybody, and then they get, um, they get destroyed when the sharps container gets full. So you want to make sure that you give this to me, and you want to make sure that you let me know what you're giving it, giving me before you hand it to me, because I like my fingers too, and I don't want any holes in them. So here's the brand new blade, and this is how you install it. So grab the brand, brand new blade with your dominant hand, and push it into the little slot in the collet. So you push it into the little slot, being careful not to stick yourself with the point. And I'm grabbing the back of the blade, not the sharp side. Hold on to the blade and twist the handle clockwise until it's tight. Now, you're not trying to hold the whole world together here. Um, that's that. Okay, so it's nice and snug. It's not going to come loose very easily. And it's ready to go. As I've laid out a few different types of lines that you might want to cut, that present really some of the most obvious problems you could have. The first one up top is a really straight line that's been drawn with the ruler. The second one is an angled line, and the, the corners of this, here and here, present particular problems, and I'll talk about what they are in just a second. One of the big things that I wanna talk about is that this X-Acto knife, although very sharp, um, is not so sharp that it can cut right through something like a piece of heavy mat board or a piece of heavy cardboard. And in order to show you how to do that the right way, we're gonna jump ahead for a second and I'm gonna show you how to cut through a piece of cardboard. Corrugated cardboard is one of the toughest things to cut through with an X-Acto knife. And as this is about how to use a knife and also knife safety, there are a couple of things that you need to know. This is just an old pizza box top, but it's a standard corrugated cardboard. You know, if you cut this in half and looked at the side, it would have those waves in it. So this is how you cut it. Now, 
Many people think that, the, that what you ought to do is put this in the line and just press down as hard as you can and their hands will be shaking like this, they're pressing so hard. That's a really bad idea. The reason it's a bad idea is because when we're pressing like that, if it pops loose, it's gonna come at us really quickly. And sometimes when people are doing things like that, they move their hands into a place where they have better leverage and you can see your hand pops out and it comes right across your hand. That would be really, really, really bad. So what we, the, one of the first things that I tell people is never put your hands in front of the blade under any circumstances. You hear all the time, don't, don't cut toward you. Well, you can't see my body right now, but I'm definitely cutting toward me. But what I'm not doing is I'm not cutting toward my hand and keeping my hand off to the side. So the right way to cut through something heavy like a piece of corrugated cardboard is to just draw down the line like you're drawing with a pencil, like you're tracing it with a pencil. Now I do it once, and then I cut through it twice. I'm, I'm putting almost no pressure on this. Cut through it a third time, cut through it a fourth time, and I can virtually, yep, I can guarantee it's cut all the way through. And in fact, I'll show you that by doing another one. I'm gonna cut one, two, three. Notice I spun the material. I didn't do anything weird with the cut. I'm still cutting in the same direction toward myself. Take a look at that. Now I did overcut the corners a bit more than I needed to but notice I have really nice clean corner edges and I'm gonna talk more about that in just a moment. So these are the cuts that I was talking about. Now this is a much thinner material. This is a poster board, like something that you might buy at Walmart for just a dollar or two. And we're gonna, I'm gonna do the uh, easiest cut first, except it's not that easy. Um, the reason it's not, uh, it will become clear in a second. I have a plastic ruler here. Plastic and X-Acto knives, really not friends. Very easy to cut up the edge of a plastic ruler. And if I had a steel ruler here with me, that would be my preference, would be to use a steel or aluminum ruler. But I'm gonna be really careful and I'm gonna cut along this line like this. And what I do is rulers, I don't know if you have ever noticed this, but they're humped up in the middle when they are laying down the way that you can read them. But if you flip them over the other way, most rulers, again, are humped up in the middle, so that lifts the edge up off the paper. That makes it a little easier to not hack into this ruler. So what I'm gonna do is turn it over upside down so that this edge is lifted off of the paper a little bit. I'm gonna put my knife on there, and again, I'm just gonna draw, trace along the line. I am definitely not mentally doing anything else while I'm doing this. I just did three passes and I think that was one more than I needed to do, but you can see, look at that beautiful, nice, clean cut. And what about something like this? It's zigzagging and what I really think is important is to have nice, sharp corners. So in order to do that, you have to do something, and I'm gonna mark it on here. I wouldn't mark it on my real one if I was, if I was using this for a project, unless it was like on the back or done in pencil. But here in this video, I can show you that what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna overcut the corners just slightly, maybe not even that much. But I'm gonna cut past the corner a little bit. And the reason I do that is then there's not a little piece of paper left at the point that's not cut. And I go to, I go to take it off, I go to separate the two pieces and that little piece sticks and then it breaks out and I get a torn little edge filling that point and it doesn't look nice. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna draw very careful. Oh, geez, that was bad. I'm gonna draw very carefully down my line and overcut the corner just slightly. Overcut the corner, draw down my line. Overcut the corner just a little bit. Overcut the corner just a little bit. And then just for, just to be sure, I'm gonna go do the whole process once more just following on my old line, and it's e that's easier than it sounds. It, your knife just kind of wants to go into that already cut channel. And there we go. Notice my hands out of the way. I turned the paper as I was cutting, and there we go. And we've got that nice, crisp, clean corner. Okay, nice, crisp, and clean. No, 
junk stuck in there. It came apart very easily. Now, how about this? This is a, uh, you know, this very snaky line. Well, again, that's one of the nice things about this is that I don't have to cut with this big broad blade all the time. I can lift up and cut a little bit more with the point. And that allows me more maneuverability. So I'm gonna just draw down that line and I go nice and slowly. But notice that I don't press, I'm not pressing really hard, but notice I'm also not, um, I'm not doing a bunch of little cuts. I'm doing one long one if I can help it, because that'll give me a nice smooth edge. Okay, and I got to the end, so now I'm gonna do it again. And again, I'm just following my cut line, which is easier than it seems because there's a channel there, and as long as you're not pressing hard, your knife is gonna wanna follow that channel. And as you can see, it's coming up a little bit. I probably cut through that on the first try. And let's see what it looks like. Well, bam, there it is. Beautiful cut. Hands out of the way when I'm cutting. If I need to change my direction, I just move my material. I could either go here or I could turn back to cut that. And again, if I'm cutting with a ruler, if the ruler, if I'm lucky enough to have a ruler that humps up in the middle on the side where you, uh, you know, it's thicker here and thinner here down at the edges, I just flip that over. You still have to be careful, especially if it's a plastic ruler that you don't take a big dig out of it. But there you go. Oh, you know, one thing I didn't mention, this is a self-healing cutting mat. These things are absolutely important, especially in our art room. We don't want our desks all cut up, and if, um, you know, I'm here on my kitchen table, and my wife certainly doesn't want me hacking into that. So what I've done, this is a great big one, and we do have a couple of big ones in the art room, but we have smaller ones too. You always want to put a cutting mat down. You never want to find yourself cutting on a table, because that's, uh, I, you know, that's, uh, those tables are very expensive, and it just is not the way to do it. Uh, one of the other things that can happen is your knife just doesn't react really well to cutting through hard, into hard stuff. So... Uh, we only use these knives for cutting uh, art in our art stuff or, you know, um, cutting wood. They are no good for cutting metal. And uh, certainly these are not operating room tools. Um, and then one last thing. So when you're done with this, it's perfectly okay to give it back to me like this. But at home, if you have your own, I recommend this. When you're done, grab the blade, grab it from the back. Twist counterclockwise on the handle. Pop the collet down if you need to. You might not need to. Slide the blade out, and then I turn the blade around, and I put it in here. I don't jam it in there. I just put it in there very lightly and delicately, and I slightly tighten this so that the blade won't fall out. And this covers a significant part of the blade, including the point, so it's much safer to store it in a drawer or in a cup this way, so you don't accidentally you know, grab it and jab yourself. There's still a little bit of blade showing, but it's a good way to handle it. If you jam it in there and you squeeze it too tight, you'll make the, you'll mess up the point and you'll make the blade not sharp. So do it lightly and be careful about it. But this is a little bit safer. Uh, in the art room, we put them in a box and it's a whole box full of knives. So I'm never gonna make the mistake of reaching in there and not, you know, think I'm getting a pen. But at home, this could be a little different. So that's our knife safety and our knife how-to video. One last thing to talk about here. I've shown you the safe use of these materials and it's my expectation that everyone is going to use these safe procedures. If you're not using a safe procedure, I'll give you a warning and I'll retrain you, but if I see that not safe use happening very frequently, you're not gonna be allowed to use these knives. And there's really, this does a lot of stuff you can't do with scissors. So if you want to use the knives, you've got to follow the rules. Thanks very much. I'll talk to you soon.